This is Wednesday morning, June 2nd, and we are here for this morning's edition of Glimpses of Grace and Glory. Today we want to talk about subjects that uh, should be dear to all our hearts and the, the revelation uh, of Jesus Christ. Some people say the revelation of John, but it wasn't the revelation of John, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's written by the Apostle John. But in the second chapter of the Revelation, we read this, and these are the words of the Lord Jesus as he speaks to the seven churches of Asia. And in chapter two, he's talking to the church of Ephesus. And he mentions the things that he notices because he notices all our works. And any works that are going to be eternal have to come from him working through us. It's never the works of our own flesh. But it comes from being saved and surrendering to the Spirit of God. Now, he's talking to churches, not to individuals, so, so watch out for that. He's talking to a church, and he says this, I know all the things you do. I've seen your hard work and your patient endurance. These people were very patient. They worked hard for the Lord. Their time and effort was given to doing the work of the Lord, the work of the ministry. He said, I know you don't tolerate evil people. Oh, we, we hate sin. We just... We just uh, can't tolerate it. You've examined the claims of those who say they are apostles and are not. And you found them liars. So even they, they even routed out false teachers. They, they would notice that these people are fake. They're not serving the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not really preaching the gospel. And he says, you, uh, you have patiently suffered for me without quitting. So they are even suffering persecution for the Lord and they don't give up. So these are a lot of good things that this church of Ephesus is doing. Once again, this is a church, a body of people, and this is the testimony that they have, that they suffer patiently and they don't quit. They work hard for the Lord. But Jesus has to say this to them. And let's take this seriously and examine ourselves. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. And King James says, you've left your first love. When we think about even relationships, marriage relationships, if you, if you think back, if you're older and you've, you've been through the dating days and you think about when you were dating your wife or dating your husband before you got married or even when you first got married and the world could collapse around you and all you wanted to do was be with the one you loved. And you loved that person so much that you didn't want to be away from them. I know when I was dating my wife before we got married, we'd be on the phone at night uh, after I went home and we'd be on the phone for an hour and sometimes we wouldn't say a word for a while, just be breathing and, and uh, just didn't want to hang up because I didn't want to say goodnight. I just wanted, I loved her so much, I just wanted to stay on the phone and she wanted to stay on the phone. I remember when I would be walking away from her front porch at her parents' house, I would keep looking back and I would just have to go back and I just didn't want to leave her. Just loved her so much. And that's the way it should be. And when I first received the Lord, I just couldn't get out of the Bible. Thought about the Lord all day, all night. Just couldn't get enough of the Lord Jesus Christ. Couldn't get enough of his word. But what happens after a while? I'm very busy in the work of the ministry. But it's just busy work a lot of times. But where is the true love for the Lord? You know... The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 13, if I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. It's just a bunch of noise. If there's not love in it, you can be preaching the gospel, you can be out there witnessing, but if it's not truly with the love of God in your heart for the Lord and for others, it's just a, just a lot of noise. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I did have, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. See, without love, it's not a right motivation. If everything I do is not for the love of the Lord and for the love of other people, then it's not the right motivation. If you're feeding, if you're feeding the homeless, if you're visiting the sick, but you don't really love them, it's not the right motivation. It's just, it's not, it's not what the Spirit is doing. It's the right thing to do. It's just not the right motivation. And so it doesn't really count for anything. He says, if I gave everything I have to, to the poor and even sacrificed my body, gave my body to be burned, I could, boast, I could boast about it 
but if I didn't love others, I'd gain nothing. So you can go around and boast about it. I did this, and I, I suffered this persecution, and I gave all my stuff to the poor, but it doesn't mean a thing if it's not with love. So maybe now you say, wow, I, I, need to, I need to make sure I love, and God help me to love more. Well, love is not something that you can muster up. You can't muster up to be taller if you said, well, if, if God said, you know, you need to be six foot eight. And you say, well, I'm going to try hard to be six foot eight. I don't care how hard you try. You're not going to be six foot eight if you're six foot one or if you're five foot ten. You can't change or muster up what you don't have the ability to create. You can't say, oh, I think I'm going to have blue eyes or I'm going to have brown eyes if you don't. You can't add one, one measure to your stature, the Bible says. You cannot, and the, you can't change the color of your skin. You can't change, the leper cannot change his spot. The Ethiopian can't change his skin. Love comes only from the Lord Jesus Christ. He is love. God is love. Only by receiving his spirit into our lives can there be love. It's the overflowing of the magnificent love of God. The grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ is boundless. And when he comes into us, our cup runs over. That's why Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life because everywhere we go, that love of God just keeps pouring out. The mercy of God, the grace of God. It comes only from Him. So don't try, don't get upset and say, I, Oh, I need to make this happen. You're not going to make it happen. You need to spend time with the Lord and say, Lord, I need to surrender and let your spirit dwell in me richly because you are love. I can only love you because you first loved me. Jesus said, you didn't love me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. And you, you only love me because I first loved you. We can't give away what we don't have. So receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, pray for his spirit to dwell in you richly. And then that love will come forth. But let's do examine ourselves and say, have I just been working and, and putting forth and spinning my wheels and going 100 miles per hour, but there's no love in it. So, Lord, I need to just stop and sit back and say, I need you to come in and let me peacefully let allow you to do your work through me for your love to show forth. And then that love will be shown first for the Lord and then for other people too, for the body of Christ and even for our enemies. And that's possible only through Jesus Christ in us. And Lord, we just thank and praise you that we don't have to do anything on our own. It's not possible for us to do anything of our own. You said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So help us to surrender to you, to allow you to live your life through us. Because your life is what counts. You rose from the grave to give your life to us so you can live your life through us. And that love, that joy, that peace... The fruit of the Spirit will come forth from your spirit within, and you will accomplish what you want to be accomplished as we surrender to you. We just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.